For my last and final vlog in the Uzbekistan series, I'm going to showcase three different itineraries that you can choose from if you're planning your visit to Uzbekistan. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Just Go with Amreen. I am going to showcase three different itineraries of different number of days that you can choose from if you want to plan your visit to Uzbekistan. Right now is the best time to visit this country. So if you're planning to go in September, October, even November is a good time. In fact, I am hosting my group trip for women in November to Uzbekistan. The dates are from 18 to 24. Anyway, more on that later, but let's dive right into this. So let me just start with your comfort zone, what you guys think that you can cover in four nights. So if this is the case, you can only cover Tashkent, which is the capital, and Samarkand, which is one of the most popular places to visit in Uzbekistan. Let me show what you can cover in these four nights and five days. So for day one, you would land in Tashkent. You would explore the city. Um, Tashkent is a very modern city. In fact, it doesn't even look like Uzbekistan. Another good thing about visiting Tashkent or starting a trip from Tashkent is that you will not um, be shocked by the language barrier. A lot of people in Tashkent speak English because it is the capital city. So ideally, depending on what time you land, if you're landing in the morning, that's great because then you can still make use of that particular day and you can do a quick, short city tour of Tashkent. Honestly, I was not even interested in exploring the city of Tashkent because, I mean, what's there to see? <laughs> it's a city city, it's literally modern, very Dubai slash Baku slash Singapore <laughs> type looking place. So I skipped that, but if you want, you can do that. And the next whole day, you can keep to explore the nature side of Tashkent. The Tashkent region is absolutely stunning. They have waterfalls, they have lakes, they have reservoirs, they have mountains. You can also live in the mountains if you want for a night, but well, if you're short on time, I don't think you want to hop around so much, but that's just an idea. So, Tashkent region, one full day because it is far and to cover all these places, you're gonna need some time. Now this is day two and this, this part of the itinerary completely depends on the fact that what did you cover on day one? What time did you land in Tashkent? Did you or did you not explore the city and do you want to do that or not? So on day two, either in, in the evening, last train, you could go to Samarkand, take a bullet train there or you can do that next day after you've finished your city tour of Tashkent, you can take your bullet train from Tashkent to Samarkand. And then you begin your exploration of the city Samarkand. Samarkand has a lot to offer and a lot more to offer than Tashkent. They have a lot of monuments, Muslims, mosques to explore. So you will need at least one and a half day, if not two full days, at least minimum one and a half day to explore Samarkand. So now it depends, you could either take a bullet train back to Tashkent and take your flight out from there, or Samarkand also has an international airport. So ideally, you would want to land in Tashkent and get out of Samarkand so that you're not going back and forth so much. The bullet train is extremely sophisticated. You're probably thinking in your head, Uzbekistan, not such a developed country or whatever, but the bullet train blew my mind away. It was super spacious, sophisticated, extremely amazing. So do take the bullet train. It is the most quickest safest, cheapest way of going from Tashkent to Samarkand. So that was the first itinerary, first option for you if you're going to Uzbekistan for four nights and five days. If you are just interested in covering two main cities, if you had to pick two main cities of Uzbekistan and cover that, then those are the two cities that you would do. Now, moving along to my ideal itinerary. In fact, this is the itinerary that I will be covering in my group trip that I am hosting in November from November 18 to 24 for 6 nights and 7 days. So let me just set your expectations right. Uzbekistan is a huge country, okay? So whether you go there for 4 nights, 6 nights, you will still be covering a lot and you will be moving a lot. You will be on the go. Let's start with day 1. So ideally you want to land in Samarkand and start with a big city which has so much to offer. Get that out of the way and you can power through the rest of the smaller cities. 
from my experience uh, that I took my Wizz Air from Abu Dhabi that landed in Samarkand, landed at 9 a.m. or something, uh, which was great because I had an entire day to myself to explore the city. Anyway, depending on what time you land, explore the city on day one itself. Day two, spend your entire day exploring Samarkand, the monuments, the mosques, the Muslims, all of that beautiful stuff, gorgeous architecture and then that evening take the last bullet train from Samarkand to Bukhara, the ancient city of Uzbekistan. The city that actually looks like it has come from Uzbekistan, like it belongs there. The way Bukhara looks is going to blow your mind because it is extremely different from Tashkent and Samarkand. Here in Bukhara you're spending two nights because you have just arrived on day two, you obviously didn't see anything, you've spent your entire day exploring Bukhara, too tired. Bukhara is also one of the hottest city in Uzbekistan, no matter what weather you go in, it is going to be sort of warm during the day, so you will be quite exhausted. But you want to stay the night, you want to explore and experience the street, the nightlife, the music, all of that fun stuff, and then leave the following day. Also, all you shopaholics, you are going to want to spend more time in Bukhara anyway because this is the only city where you will be able to shop to your heart's content. Anything and everything that you find over here, you will not be able to find these things in Samarkand or Tashkent or Khiva. It's beautiful. This city is known for trade and obviously shopping is inevitable. Next morning, take the bullet train, head to Tashkent, Start exploring the city, do the city tour on that day itself. Next day, which is the last day, enjoy your time in nature all day. So ideally, I would want to stay in the mountains I would skip the whole city tour. This is just my opinion and my suggestion. I would arrive in Tashkent, go straight to the mountains, experience the time in nature, just chill over there, spend the night over there. Next morning, do the whole Tashkent region, explore the mountains, the lakes, the waterfalls, spend the night again in the mountains. Next morning, you can either fly out of Tashkent or take a train, a bullet train, back to Samarkand and fly out of there. That's your six nights and seven day itinerary for Uzbekistan, which is my personal favorite, honestly. Now, this is the last and final option. If you have a lot of time, you are really into history and architecture and you go to a country and see everything and come back. If you're that kind of person, then you're gonna need eight nights and nine days. Now refer back to my previous itinerary of 6 nights and 7 days, first 3 days remain the same. Day number 4, instead of going from Bukhara to Tashkent, we go a little further, we go from Bukhara to a city called Khiva. From the outside and from far, you will think that Khiva and Bukhara look very similar, but of course they don't. They have different histories, different monuments, different architecture, different importance and history and all that kind of stuff. So, like I said, if you are really into that kind of stuff, like history, architecture, then you must not miss Kiva. Spend day number five exploring Kiva. Sleep overnight in Kiva. Day number six, you head back from Kiva to Tashkent. There is an overnight train that takes you there, but there is a better and quicker way of going. Take a flight. <laughs> Fly from Kiva to Tashkent, it will be a lot quicker. It may not be the cheapest, but it is the fastest way of going from Kiva to Tashkent. Follow the rest of the plan like my itinerary number two and explore Tashkent, stay in the nature, explore mountains, lakes, waterfalls, come back to Samarkand, fly out of Samarkand or you can stay in Tashkent and fly out of Tashkent as well. There we go. Those were my two cents a lot of cents actually, <laughs> about Uzbekistan and the different itineraries that you can choose from if you wish to go to this lovely country. It is a very, very charming country and if you are even wildly thinking that uh, I've already been to Kazakhstan, uh, how is Uzbekistan different? Extremely, extremely different. So um, if you're into history and you're into nature, I would say if you want to combine two countries, um, I would say go for the four nights and five days 
itinerary with Uzbekistan and do another four five nights in Kazakhstan or Kyrgyzstan because that's out and out nature. If you don't want to combine two countries together, then please try to at least do six nights in seven days the ideal itinerary of Uzbekistan. And if you have more time, that's amazing. <laughs> I hope you guys like this vlog and you found this very helpful. I will leave the relevant links for public transportation and all that kind of fun stuff down in the description below. If you want to join my group trip, leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you like this vlog, you know what to do. Give me a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any of my upcoming adventures. New country starting next week. I will see you guys. Until then, take care. Bye. Cheers. For second night? Yeah. Wow. Really? Shit. And out of Samarkand? Let's say that again. Uh, you want to explore because...